Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. Today's intentions are for those of the members of the Little Flower Society, the Infant of Prague. Today, we have a special intention for our Eucharistic ministers, our lectors and support staff, and a memorial for Michael Ritchie. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we twisted the truth in everything that we do and say. And we ask the Lord for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the new covenant. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the grain of wheat that dies to bring life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the chosen and glorified Son of God. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God, of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you steal to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing, when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statues that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, 
I see four men unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne above the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest to perseverance. Glory and praise forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will, come, you will become free? So Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you're trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you're trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
In today's gospel, he tells them and us, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth can sometimes be difficult to accept. In today's gospel, Jesus is speaking with people who seem to be open to his message, but they are interested, they're not convinced. And so then Jesus challenges them, and he tells them what he means by truth. Remember next week, in one of the Gospels, when Jesus comes before Pilate, that same question comes up. Pilate asks him, and what is truth? When we look at our life, our country, we believe that we are a country that is free, the land of the free. And I think we often confuse freedom for individualism. We think freedom is freedom of choice, period. I can do whatever I want to do. As long as I don't hurt anybody, we reason, we should be able to do as we please. But does giving in to every situation, every whim, every temptation really make us free? Or is there a different kind or different kinds of slavery that we ignore or sort of have taken on as being what is important to me. As I said, Jesus mentions here today, he comes to sight, he has said he seriously wants us to understand that sin is not just a simple action. It can easily become a pattern, which then can turn into a routine, which eventually can turn into enslavement of some kind. So what are the things that nag us or that hurt us, keep us up at night? Well, it might be guilt. We all have it one way or the other. We don't know what to do with it. And we let it control us. It could be a pervasive sense of fear and anxiety. And there's certainly plenty of that around when you look at what happens each day in our lives, not just in our own country, but around the world. It might be anger. And anger, hatred, sometimes influences everything that we do every day. We don't know what to do with it. It might be other things like excessive attachment to food, to alcohol, to drugs. It can be as simple as where we spend our time every day. And not in a good sense, but it preoccupies everything. Too much time being spent on television, shopping, surfing the internet, doing the things, spending so much time and energy that we don't have time to be there for each other, to be there for God. There are so many things. So remember the statement that I started out with, the truth sometimes can be very challenging and very difficult. We ignore it. So when Jesus says, I came to share the truth with you, and what is the truth? He's telling them that he came to save us, to forgive us, that God loves us, and that if we open our eyes and our hearts to him, God is always willing to forgive. He will forgive. We may say, as we do the young father, forgive us as we forgive each other. We are not as so generous and so kind when it comes of sharing the gift that we have received in confession with somebody else. 
That's the challenge. That's why that's where the truth really hits home, doesn't it? And yet, Jesus keeps inviting us and keeps saying us, I am there with you. And often, we don't have to do a lot of things or big things. As Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. So with good hearts and a willing hands, you and I can make a difference. Never underestimate the, important, the importance of the little things that we do. We don't have to do big things. Sometimes it's as simple as slowing down and maybe looking in someone's eyes. It's a wonderful thing to remember. Yeah, when we look always sideways, and I keep using it because sometimes I catch myself doing it. We have a hard time looking at each other, and especially when it comes to a difficult situation. It is as simple as perhaps bringing some a sense of humor into a situation that is difficult to deal with, any kind of hardship to tell people that we really love them and to make it in such a way that it means something, not just something like we say every day good morning and good day and have a good day, but to really mean it and let it come from the heart and have it mean that we accept you regardless of what has happened in our relationships because that's how God loves us. Notice, Jesus never says anything about a particular sin when he forgave people. He also reaches out to us. He forgives. His mercy is unconditional. His forgiveness is unconditional. I remember, you know, someday hearing, you know, when somebody said, you said you, I love you. Do you really? Usually there's a, there's a condition behind it. I love you if, that if, if you do what I want you to do. Well, that's not love. That's selfishness. That's catering to our own whims and what I want. That ego that keeps coming. And there are some good dimensions to the ego. But most of the time, it restricts us because there's always that selfishness involved. And so... As we come back to today's scripture reading from Jesus talking to the disciples and the people that came to him and really wanted to listen, but then suddenly said, no, we don't care. Not that way. We won't accept that. And of course, they were already plotting his life to kill him. And Jesus saw that, but he waited patiently, hoping that maybe they would turn as he asks us, when he looks at us and says, I am there for you. You are the person that I love, that God loves. He doesn't restrict his mercy and his forgiveness. It is unconditional. And then he says, and that's the truth, how I love and how I forgive, you and I need to love and forgive each other. Well, I think most of the time, we just have to say, Lord, help me to do that. Help me to bridge the gap, the woundedness that keeps festering in my life because I'm not willing to forgive as you forgive me. Or I'm not even wondering, I'm even wondering if you could forgive me. There's nothing in the world that God cannot forgive and will not forgive. But can we love that way? Can we forgive that? Well, this coming week, we come to the end of Lent. And so maybe let us pray, Lord, help me to open my heart so that I can truly hear and see how much you love me and that I can help others to do the same. As I said, it's in the small things that we do. And God reaches out and he always says, I'm there from beginning to the end. Love each other as I love you.
And when we do that, then this Lent and this Easter season will become a blessing in our lives that we can truly understand and perhaps believe ourselves how much God loves me, how much God loves you. confident that God will hear us, so we offer now our prayers for the church and for the whole world. For increased vocations to the diverse ministries, which give life and abundance to the church, we pray to the Lord. For national and local leaders who govern with wisdom, honesty, and responsibility, let us pray to the Lord for families and everyone who struggles due to disability, unemployment or underemployment, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray today for parents who dedicate their lives to their families, especially in countries stricken by poverty or war. We pray to the Lord. For those who are dedicated to teach others about the Lord through scripture, and through prayer groups, that we will always be open and recognize God's mercy and forgiveness and love, we pray to the Lord. For a moment now, let each one of us make her or his private intention. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, you show us through your son, Jesus, how much you love us. And you invite us to open our hearts so that we can receive the peace and the love that you give. And so all of our needs, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory collection that we take up is for the upkeep of the shrine and we thank you for your generosity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive back, O oh Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name and grant that they may become remedies for our healing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and every word to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O God. 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously can peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. 
God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we greet Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese, our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. I want to remind you, this coming Friday, we have the Stations of the Cross, which are north of here. They begin at 10.30 and then followed by Mass here, and there will be a talk after Mass on the meaning of Lent, uh, the meaning of uh, Holy Week. So that's all coming up this coming Friday. We hope to see you there, okay? God bless and have a wonderful day.